The biggest innovation within information management today is the cloud. Cloud computing enables companies with 10 employees to have the same complex IT infrastructure as those with 100,000. And it's not just have, it doesn't have just that big impact. It's also big money. It is projected that by next year, the total market size for cloud computing is $149 billion. That's not no short change. On top of that, it's big data. Now, by 2020, it's estimated that there'll be 11 zettabytes worth of data on the cloud. 11 zettabytes may not sound that much, but when you consider one zettabyte is the equivalent to one billion gigabytes, that's a lot of data. Especially when you consider that last year, the global digital uh, company, IDC, worked out there was something like 2.7 zettabytes of global digital data. That's a lot of data in play. But I go on about the cloud, but what actually is it? So if we look at the dictionary definition, Oxford says, puts it like this, it's the practice of using a network of remote servers hosted via the internet to store, manage, and process data rather than have it on a local server or a personal computer. OK, but what's that in practice? Well, let's say you're a small company. You start off with one employee. And as you grow, you decide to actually, you need to invest. You need to invest in uh, a decent infrastructure. So you purchase a server. That's pretty expensive. But then as you continue to grow and grow and grow, the cost of having an IT infrastructure like this just escalates. Because you're not only paying for the hardware, you're also paying for the maintenance, the power supply, they eat up a heck of a lot of uh, energy, and actually cooling them down. This is where cloud computing takes a whole different philosophy. Instead of ad as a company, you decide to purchase your own hardware. With the cloud, you, rent, you, uh, you uh, sort of rent it out. You are, in a sense, a tenant of a cloud provider. And this enables sort of organizations to have use, uh, make efficient use of the data and storage capacity. But that uh, resource isn't just used by one company. It's used by people maybe your competitors, or completely different organizations altogether. But the cloud isn't our subject tonight. Tonight's subject is trust, integrity, and character. So where does this all fit in with the cloud? Well, at the heart of a cloud is a relationship. The relationship between a chief information officer and a cloud provider. And it is this relationship which puts our three concepts into practice. So let's begin with trust. The CIO has a huge exercise of trust when they decide to adopt a cloud model. Because actually, when you think about it, think about the types of data that they're putting onto a cloud, that they're handing over to a third party. You've got p payroll. You've got HR records. These are pe sensitive and personal information, and you don't want that in anyone else's hands if you can help it. You've also got um, bid documents. Do you really want your competitors to know what you're bidding against, what your solution is? You've also got accounting records. All of these things would be, if you adopt a cloud-type model, would be put into the hands of someone else. And you're trusting them to look after it properly. For any CIO, that's difficult. So that's trust. What about our next concept, integrity? The dictionary defines integrity as adherence to moral and ethical principles, soundness of moral character, honesty. And it is within the relationship between the cloud provider and the CIO where integrity is so important. For the cloud provider, they need to be able to prove to the uh, CIO that they are worthy of being trusted with their data, that they have the in integrity, the honesty to protect, say, yes, I can protect your data, and yes, I will be available. Because otherwise, the relationship would just collapse. And it, I think it's quite interesting when you look at some recent uh, cloud outages, so when the cloud has failed, for some reason. Two of the sort of more high-profile ones kind of gives us an idea of why integrity is so important. So first of all, Windows Azure, Microsoft's own uh, cloud service. It went out in February last year for 24 hours. That's a whole day's worth of productivity lost by thousands of companies. That's not good. If it's So in a way, the these companies were reliant on Microsoft to actually continue to provide their service and be honest that they could actually do it. This was a huge test for them. Even more recently, I think the Amazon Web Services um, 
example provides quite a nice look at how important it is, not just for the customers, but actually for the company themselves. So Amazon, in uh, January this year, went out for a total of 49 minutes. Okay, it's not much in comparison to the 24 hours, but when you consider that, that 49 minutes costs them $4 million. That's no, it may seem like small change for a big company like Amazon, but actually, $4 million for 49 minutes, that kind of shows us that these companies aren't just putting their uh, reputation on the line, they're actually putting money, and it pays for them to be integral as well. There is, of course, a uh, two-way side to this integrity, and that's uh, this cloud, uh, the CIO saying, yes, I'm happy to play the cloud provider, the invoice on time, according to SLAs. Believe me, that's easier said than done uh, within the IT industry. But, so that's integrity. Our final concept is character. And when it comes to character, I think Christopher Nolan's latest film, The Dark Knight Rises, introduces us with a quite an interesting observation. Anne Hathaway's character, Selena Kyle, said this. There's no fresh start in today's world. Any 12-year-old with a cell phone could find out what you did. Everything we do is collated and quantified. Everything sticks. Everything we do is collated and quantified. Everything sticks. And I think that is so true of today's modern world. We could do something on the internet. A business could do something wrong. And people wouldn't find out about it. Just Google them. And what they did would just be up there. And I think GoDaddy introduces us to quite a nice, interesting case. So GoDaddy, last year, launched their Amazon cloud service, uh, no, not Amazon cloud service, their own cloud services. And they went on for about, I think it was until September, when they suffered their first cloud outage, six hours. Not exactly anything to say, oh no, what calamity, considering Windows. But in October, just about 20 days afterwards, they announced that they were withdrawing their cloud uh, services from the customers. And they did it quite silently as well. And I mean, you can think about it what you like, but for me, I look at it and think, okay, this company who markets themselves as actually, we're trustworthy, we're very customer driven. Actually, for some reason, I'm assuming because they were more concerned about their profit, decided to withdraw from the cloud industry. And they did it on such a sly that it gives an impression that actually what they say about their values being customer driven, it's not important to them. And I think this is a sign of character within an organization. Character at the heart of it is their values in actions. The values that sometimes people think is, oh, that's just a marketing tool. Actually, when those, those values are lived out by their deeds, their actions, that is what matters. Because if you look in the IT industry, you can think of two types of people. You've got the suited and booted IBM, the serious professional, or you've got the Google, who are just sort of seen as those who just relax, take it easy, maybe not even do any work, like this guy here. But actually, you can look at the company culture and think, OK, that's fine. But both of these organizations, both IBM and uh, Google, are defined by their character, their actions, how they, um, how they do business. That's what characterizes them. And that is what keeps people going back and back to them over and over again. And it's this character that they have and that they project to, to their business deeds that stands out. Because at the end of the day, it's this relationship that's, um, that is important. It's not the fact of what product you're doing. It's actually how you do business. So, in conclusion, we do live in an information age, an age where we rely so much on technology. However, the traditional concepts of trust, character, and integrity still remain as important today as they do yesteryear. Thank you.